Hey guys, I'm Dave, and um, I'm sure you've all seen the $99 bill that UAV Futures did. So I'm bringing you the $150 bill. Uh, this one's actually a competitive racer, and uh, we're going to show you what it does out at the park. We're going to do a bit of a uh, speed test zone and see how fast this can really go. But um, quickly, we'll just go over the parts. So we've got the Racer Star 2508 motors. These guys are gnarly. Uh, we've got a Foxeer Monster Mini Pro. We've got the Mamba 40 amp stack with the F405 flight controller and old trusty TX805 from Airchain. We've all got it packaged in this Union racing frame. And this thing has surprised me. It's a really, really nice design and the carbon seems really good quality. So uh, yeah, let's go put it through its paces out at the park and see what happens. Okay, so we're out here today with this $150 build that I've done up with all parts from Banggood. Um, I've paired it with a RXSR receiver because it's a plug and fly kit. And we're gonna see how fast it goes. It should be interesting. I've got the BR2508 motors. And today I'm running uh, Gemfan Hulky 5055 props. So we've got a lot of pitch, but really big motors. And uh, we've set up this speed zone. And yeah, we're gonna see how fast it goes. Okay, so we're measuring from these trees up here all the way along. We've just set up these two sticks that we're gonna run some string between. And on this tape measure, 30, 30 meters that is. We're at 30 meters from the tree down there. Okay, so we've got the bottom line set up here and the top one set up up the top here so with these two points we're looking at a 30 meter gap from that we'll be able to calculate the speed from the dvr of the footage might also set up the camera by the side and uh, yeah hopefully we'll be able to see this from in the footage it is quite a big gap hopefully i can actually keep it in line for that length we've got a couple of guys just sitting over here so we'll see how it goes all right, today I'm going to be flying the CNHL 120C Mini Stars, but um, I'm going to start off with a pretty new 100C. All right, let's take it for a test fly, hey? Eh? Low battery. I'm trying to capture it from the top. Going again. Ready? Yep. Damn. Camera angle. <laughs> Point straight up. <laughs> it is a speed run after all. 60 degrees. Oh, I'm out. All right, let's go for the last speed run, the last good battery. Let's see how quick we can do. Acro mode, precision aerobatics. Ammo it on. That was quarter throttle. All right, is the coast clear, Mick? Where do you want to go? Do you want to do the, the straight? The yeah. Clear. All right, you ready? Andrew's out ready? the back. All right. Oh, that was sweet. That was like only about 0.5. All right, let's try once more. I'm just going to do another circle. The, Unsag a little bit. Alright, let's go. Okay, now looking at the DVR after this flight here, we can actually see how fast it went knowing the distance and then we can calculate the time by how many frames. So this DVR is recorded at 30 frames per second, which means that each second of time we have 30 frames. From this we can calculate from X number of frames how many how much time in seconds the quad took to pass through the speed zone, which then gives us a unit of time and a unit of distance so we can calculate the speed. So here we can see that the quad took 
13 frames to pass from the first line to the second line. When we calculate that, 13 frames is 0 0.43 seconds. Over a distance of 30 metres, this equates to 154 miles an hour, or 249 kilometres an hour. That's just ridiculous. This is so close to the world speed records for drones. Um, not long ago, we were only at 260, sorry, 160 miles an hour. And um, now they've only just got up to 180 miles an hour. And this is a quad with three bladed props set up more for cornering. And you can see this quad corners and it pulls through corners like no other because of the amount of bottom end torque that it's got from these big motors and running a three blade prop with such a wide blade. So now that we've figured out how fast this quad goes and how quick it is, let's have a look at the durability because for a racer, you've got to draw that fine line between speed and durability. So um, here I was doing, just messing around, doing a bit of a trick and uh, as usual, I messed it up and I hit the ground really hard. Now this isn't the first time I hit the ground today, but uh, I really bent up the props. So let's take a look at that clip. I think I broke it. Part of it was definitely more than one piece. <laughs> Let's see how strong this is. This is the second really hard crash today. There's the battery. Here's the battery. Ugh, it looks. Oh, yeah, mine's got red up the side. Yeah, too. that's the red from the uh, strap. The quad, what, that's 30 meters? That's <laughs> the length of our test area. We've got a bent prop. Oh! <laughs> So this frame is amazing because it's actually quite hard to bend those props, eh? Hey? I'm I'm surprised. That should have broken. What, what's your what's your professional opinion? That that's amazing. Is to it? be honest, just that, just a couple of bent props. Well, yeah. I... For a hundred and fifty dollar race quad. Hey. I'm, I'm really happy with this frame. That must be good carbon. Must be good carbon. Okay, so I'm here with the quad after the flight now, uh, back at home. And this thing is really awesome. I haven't changed these bent props yet, but these, uh, if you've ever flown gem fan props, these props do not bend easily. So it's just really a testament to how strong this frame is, because normally if you run strong props, you're bound to break it somewhere else. So one of the biggest design flaws in a lot of these racing frames, for example, the, the Tyro 99 frame, which is a, a cheaper racing style frame, um, on the such thin arms, they tend to put the bolt straight in the middle like a lot of freestyle frames do. But freestyle frames have a much wider arm. When you put an M3 hole in the middle of an arm that is only six millimeters wide, you lose half of the strength. And it's at the critical point where the arm actually goes between the top and bottom plate. And this causes those arms to break because you've got a weak point at the high stress area. So on this frame, it's nice to see that they've actually offset the screw and put a little eye in the arm so that you don't lose any structural rigidity of the arm. I think that's one of the reasons why this frame is so much stronger. So overall, you pay $150, you get a fully featured race drone. Uh, it's fast, it's light, it corners well. It's not too hard on batteries and you've still got all the features. You've got OSD, you've got smart, smart audio, you've got a decent camera, and um, th there's nothing to lose, really. So if you like this, have a look in the description. I've got all the links there for all the parts you'll need to put this together as a plug and fly kit. So basically, everything, just bring your own receiver and um, hook it up. Now, I haven't done a tutorial on how to put this together because at this point, there's about 500 tutorials on how to build a, uh, a race quad on YouTube, so I don't see there much point me doing one. But hey, if anyone has trouble, ask me a question, and I may end up doing one anyway. Alright, thanks. Happy flying.